Hey everybody, it's Kathy, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I created this easy, everyday, all drugstore makeup look. And this makeup look is geared towards women who haven't worn makeup in a long time, or maybe have never worn makeup and now, you know, want to get into it. It's a very basic, very easy uh, look that you can create at home using all drugstore products. As we age, our skin tends to get discolored. You might get some redness in your skin. I have mild rosacea, my skin is sensitive, so when I touch it, it does turn red. I'm going to be showing you how this great L'Oreal BB cream can hide the redness in one step. I love this stuff, it, it just works well. It's great at hiding rosacea. It's great at hiding my redness and I really do like it and I think it's a great product to have in your makeup drawer. So if you enjoy makeup videos and would like to see more from me, please give this video a thumbs up and now let's get into the makeup look. So I've done all of my skincare except for my moisturizer. Now normally I would put sunscreen on but the sunscreen that I use is actually in a tinted moisturizer. So at this point, if you're going to wear sunscreen, put it on, then your moisturizer. And the one that I've been using lately is by City Beauty and it is their multi-action sculpting cream and it's quite nice. So I just put a little bit on my finger and then I just work it in. Works great under makeup and I'm really enjoying the City Beauty products that I have been trying. So while that's drying, I just want to talk about the foundation or the BB cream that I'm going to be using today. It's by L'Oreal and it's their anti-redness BB cream. And I like this because first of all, you can apply it with your finger so you don't need, you know, any special brushes or tools. It covers my redness. Now you can see I do have some mild redness in my skin. I have sensitive skin, so anytime I touch it, it turns red. So that's what I'm gonna be using today, but they also have different BB creams and I also have the one in light. And they have, I believe, medium and deeper shades. Now the light is a little too light for me to use this time of the year. But what I have been doing is sometimes I will mix the two together. But typically I'll just wear this on its own. And you know, you can moisturize, put this on, and you would be good to go for the rest of the day if you didn't want to have a full face of makeup. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to color correct. And the product I'm using today is the Maybelline instant age rewind and i really enjoy this product i first of all like the applicator it is a bit large but you know i it's something that i can work with and they have a lot of different shades this one is 120 and i'll put all the shades that i'm wearing below in the description box so what you do is you just have to twist the bottom a bit and then you'll see some stuff come out of the top and then I just dab it lightly underneath the eye. I don't put a lot on because you can always add more, but it's sometimes difficult, you know, if you put too much on to take it off. So just for today's purposes, I don't want to use a lot of tools in case, you know, this is your very first time using makeup. So I'm going to just use my fingers, but normally I would use the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy, her concealer brush. I really like that brush. So you're supposed to use your ring finger because it's our weakest finger. So you don't want to be tugging on the eye area but I'm just going to use my index finger because that's what I'm used to doing. So I go up in the corner and then I just pull it up. Don't want to pull down. You always want to pull up because as we age our skin sags and as you can see blends in nicely. So we'll go ahead and do this side and you know if this isn't enough coverage you can always add more and just keep building up. So then if I'm not using an eyelid primer, which I normally would use because I have oily eyelids and I want my eyeshadow to last all day, a little tip is I just use a concealer. So I'll just put whatever is left on the sponge and I'll just go all over my eyelid and then I'll take the same finger and just press it in. And I think the warmth of my finger kind of helps to work it into my eyelid. And it just hides any discoloration that we might have on our eyelid you know and even if you didn't want to wear eyeshadow you would be fine just to wear this as your eyeshadow on your eyelid i have some blue veins on my eyelid so this just helps to cover it up and you can go all the way up to underneath the your eyebrow and then i just go all over 
And then remember to close this. So you just turn it the opposite way. So if you have any other discoloration on your face, this would be the time, you know, that you would want to say, if I wanted to cover that red spot there, I typically don't bother. So now we're going to put the BB cream on. So I always just like to give it a good shake and make sure that it's, you know, well stirred up or whatever you want to call it. So then I always use the back of my hand and you can see the consistency. It's pretty runny. Take my finger and I will dot it on my cheeks and then I will just rub it in and you can see the green disappears and it magically erases the redness. You know, it pretty much matches my skin tone perfectly. I don't know how they do it, but you know, this is universal. It's the one green color for everybody. So obviously I'm going to put some more on, but I just wanted to show you. You can see the redness. It's pretty much hidden and I still have, you know, some redness here where I haven't put any on. So I just kind of you know, you have to play with it and you have to figure out what is the proper amount for you. But as somebody that has oily skin, I was a little hesitant about using this. I thought it might make my skin a little more oily, but it doesn't. It's really, really a great product and it's very affordable. So you always want to make sure it's blended well at your jawline. I do not like putting makeup on my neck. Some people do. I don't. There is no right way or wrong way to apply makeup. It is your personal decision and you have to do what uh, what works the best for you and what you think looks the best. So then I just take a good look in the mirror, my magnified side, and I just want to make sure that I haven't missed any spots. You want to make sure that you do a good job around the nose. So I think that's pretty good. So the next step that I like to do is I like to powder my face and this is the first time that I'm using this product and it's by e.l.f. and it is their high definition finishing powder. It comes in a compact form. It does not come with a little sponge. I did see these sponges on Amazon. It's a pack of three from e.l.f. You know and if you didn't want to invest in the brush you could use the side of a sponge. I would recommend using the flat side of this one but I do have a real technique blush brush and I'm going to be using this for my powder and my bronzer. So what I like to do is I just dip the brush into the powder. First time using this there is a lot of fallout and typically other powders that I use don't have that much fallout. So and then I'll just um, dab it all over. I even go over my eyelids and this just sets the BB cream because I have oily skin. I just want to make sure that my makeup lasts all day and it does a great job. So there is a lot of fallout from this powder. Like I said, it's the very first time I've ever used it. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but you know, for the price, you can't go wrong. So at this point, I like to do my eyebrows. And it's the very first time that I'm using the e.l.f. eyebrow pencil. And I bought it in the color blonde because I wasn't really sure which shade would work best for me. It has a spoolie on the end. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the color. But I can tell right away. It has a micro tip, which I like. However, it's not a creamy eyebrow pencil and I'm used to creamy brow pencils. Now I will tell you yesterday I went and got my brows waxed and I also got them tinted. That is not something that I normally do but I just wanted to try it and see you know first of all has my been working am I getting uh, my brows to get filled in and I do believe that the brow serum since I've been using it, it is working. So I'm still missing quite a bit on my tails and I mean I still have to fill in a lot of spots but I'm just happy to see that the brow serum isn't a total waste of my time and money. So what I like to do is I'll take the spoolie and I will just brush my eyebrow hair up and then I'll just start here and I'll just do like gentle strokes. Now because I've never used this pencil before I'm not sure how hard I have to press because the one that I like is by Cosmetics and it goes on very smoothly but it works on pressure. So the lighter strokes you know the hair is going to be very light and if you want darker strokes you just press harder. So this eyebrow pencil seems to be working on that same principle. So I'm just following the outline of my brow. And I do have a natural arch to my brow and I'm very expressive with my face. So you know lots of times when I'm talking you'll see my brows are higher up. 
it's because I uh, use a lot of expression in my face. So you always want your brows to start about here and I'm missing hair here. So I will just do some gentle strokes and then see how I like the color. And then I can just press a little harder. Now, if you want a more detailed video on eyebrows, I do have one that I can link here. So actually, I kind of like this eyebrow pencil. So then I just like to take the spoolie and just gently uh, go over it. And just see the eyebrows are so important because they frame your face. Even if you just covered your redness, put your eyebrows on, put a little lip gloss on, most days that's all that I do, and you are ready to face the world. Uh, eyebrows are so, so important. I mean, you can see the difference between this one and this one. It just really, really enhances my eyes and frames the face. So let's go ahead and do this one. Mirror over on this side. I always find it hard to do my left side to cross over. And I would say that the, the color that I chose is spot on. I find it impossible to get my brows to look exact, but as long as they're similar, that's the best I can hope for. Because of my hypothyroidism, I do um, have my tails missing and they are sparse, but I'm happy that the serum is actually helping. You just want to do like feathery strokes. You don't want to do like one straight line because then that will look fake. I'm just doing like feathery dashes, I guess I can call it. Kind of makes it look like real brow hair. So I think that's as good as it's gonna get, but you can just see having my brows done really can enhance my eyes and bring attention to them. So this next step, you don't have to do this step or if you were just looking, you know, for a basic out the door look, you could, you know, stop now, put a little mascara on some lip gloss and you're good. But I happen to love bronzer and I love this bronzer. I have some very expensive bronzers and I always reach for this one. I love it and it is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronzer. This is in the shade 01 Light, which is the shade that I normally choose for all of my bronzers because I use them more just to add color to my face, not so much. You could use them for contouring, but then I'd probably go with a bronzer that's just a little darker. Or I like to use the Charlotte Tilbury um, Beauty Wand bronzer but most days I don't do contouring I just use my bronzer to make it look like I've been out in the sun all day so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna use the same brush that I used for the powder and just swirl it a few times and then I just go all over my face just putting it on like it's a powder and then I will sweep this down the neck and it just adds warmth to my face and makes it look like, you know, I've just stepped off a Caribbean cruise. And like I said, this bronzer is so nice. It's really one of my favorite all-time drugstore finds. So the next step I suggest is blush. And as we age, our face seems to get a little more pale. So it's really important to add just a little pop of color to it. And this is the first time I'm using this. This is the e.l.f. Putty Blush. I don't know what the color is. I'll, I'll link everything below in the description box, but this is a cream blush. Now I suggest using a cream blush, say if you're over 50, because as we age, our skin does tend to get a bit dry, but because my skin still is oily, I can wear both a cream and a powder blush, but if you use a powder blush, you risk, you know, accentuating any pores or any dryness on your skin. So I'm slowly working my way to, you know, use more cream blush exclusively and you could use your fingers for this but I went ahead and I bought the corresponding brush by elf for their putty blushes I have no idea how this is going to uh, look on my skin and it's pretty bright in the pot but before I put it on I just want to give you a tip when we were younger you know we probably put our blush here on the apple of our cheek and as somebody that has a round face it's not the best place to put my blush but of course as we get older everything droops right so what i recommend doing is i actually put my blush in line with the outer corner of my eye and i just put it on top of the cheekbone see i'm not putting it here at all because if i was to put it there they tell you you know to smile and then they put the blush there whenever you quit smiling your blush is now down here so it's just going to drag your face down and pull everything down and we don't want that we always want to pull up because we want to make it look like our face is lifted so let's just tap the brush 
I'm just gonna test it on my hand and gosh, is there anything coming? Okay, it's really bright in the pan, but I seem to have to put a lot on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start here. Okay, you can see it and then just pull up and wow, that's, um, it's pretty bright. <laughs> It's definitely brighter than what I normally would go for. So a trick you can do is take your brush that we used, you know, for the powder and the bronzer and just use it and buff it up until you are satisfied. So yeah, that looks pretty good. But can you see how this side of my face already actually looks slimmer and looks like it's being lifted up? Okay, so let's go ahead and put blush on the opposite side. So I'm just gonna take a Kleenex and wipe it off the brush and let's just see if we can work it in a little bit better i mean it's a very pretty blush so again then i would just take this big fluffy brush and buff it up so there it's pretty good so if you get this blush uh, don't put a lot on your brush i will tell you i'm not crazy about their blush brush i've used better brushes so you know you might be better off just to use your finger so then you know you could just like tap it in like that but just always remember you can take your um if you use like a brush or a sponge for your foundation or like what i showed you how to do just take like your powder brush and just like keep working it up until the color the shade that you want is there so it's not a big deal it you can always you know fix those sort of things very easily okay so the next step that i recommend is eyeshadow but again you do not have to do this but i like a one and done eyeshadow and the one that i'm using is by revlon it is their color stay and it's in the color uh, creme brulee I chose this color because I think it's fairly neutral. Nice beiges always look good with blue eyes. Now it is a cream eyeshadow, which is nice and which I really do prefer now that I'm getting older over powder eyeshadows. But I see that this comes with its own applicator. So I have no idea what this is going to apply like. I did bring in a brush just in case, but let's go ahead and use the applicator. So basically I'm just going to be putting the color on my mobile eyelid and in the crease and nothing above the crease. Let's see how this goes on. Actually, it really is creamy. It's lovely. I like the color. It brightens up my eye. We want to brighten our eyes as we get older. And I'm pleased with the applicator. I'm actually very pleased with how well this applies. I would say it's right up there with some more expensive cream eyeshadows that I have tried. I just like a one and done eyeshadow. It just, you know, it makes makeup look complete and it just brightens up the eye and kind of opens it up. So this is a really nice eyeshadow, two thumbs up and it's available in tons of colors. So the next step is mascara. And the one I'm using is by L'Oreal and it is their Lash Paradise. And I've been using this for a while. It is not my favorite for a couple of reasons. I find the brush to be very big and cumbersome. Um, whenever I'm putting mascara on, it always has a tendency, unless it's a tiny brush, to, you know, get on my upper eyelid or down here. I do find that after a week or so, it begins to clump. I'm not in love with this mascara, but I'm using it for today because it's the only drugstore one that I have. I only put mascara on my top lashes. I do two coats. I do not like how it looks on me on my bottom lashes. It is totally personal preference. If you wanna put it on your bottom, go ahead. So I just kind of start in the middle, very carefully work my way to either end. And then I try not to blink with that eye for a few seconds until it's dry. So then I'll just dip it back in and then I try and take off as much as possible because I can tell it's clumping. I don't curl my eyelashes either. I have very sparse eyelashes. They're very fair and thin. So we'll just let that sit for a few seconds before we do our second coat. And then I just use whatever is left on the brush. You can see this does a nice job of lengthening and actually curling my lashes, pulling them upwards. So, you know, maybe look for another drugstore mascara. Maybe somebody can 
recommend one that I'm not aware of. So we're just gonna let that dry for a minute or so. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to do our lips. Now normally I would use a lip liner and then I just like to go over it with a nice colored lip gloss. But for the purposes of today's video, I'm keeping it simple. So we're just going to use a lipstick. And the one that I picked up is by Rimmel and this is Sugar Plum. So a lip liner just helps to set your lipstick to help it last a little longer and also helps to keep it in place. You know, if you want to try a lip liner, go for it. But today we're just going to put on some lipstick. I just put it on my lower lip. I stay away from the corners and then I'll do my top lip. Just kind of following the outer line and then smush them together. This is a pretty color. So then what I do is I take a Kleenex. I put it over my index finger and then I stick my finger in my mouth and pull out. And that just takes off any excess lipstick so it doesn't get on your teeth. And then I just look in the mirror, you know, make sure it's where it should be. And I really like that color. It's really, really pretty. Now, if you want to build it up more, you certainly could do that. Very, very pretty. And then I always like to finish off my makeup with my perfume of the day. And the one that I have actually been using a lot and I'm really enjoying is by Jo Malone. Normally I don't like her perfume because I find it too strong, but this one is um, the Secura Cherry Blossom and it's a light floral. It's a very light floral. So if you're looking for new perfume, this is a nice one. And then the very last step, again, you don't have to do this, but I recommend doing it, is setting your makeup. So I'm using the e.l.f matte magic mist and set and it this just helps to keep your makeup in place help it last longer so i just you know do a couple of sports all over the face a lot comes out in that little bit of time so you know let's just recap and overall i think that this is a really nice everyday look you know it doesn't look like i'm wearing a lot of makeup i know we had a little bit of issue putting the blush on but i really don't like this brush if you have a different blush brush maybe try it or just use your finger or even a sponge like it's a beautiful blush but it's kind of like a little too in your face for what i'm used to i just like a little hint of color but you know i worked with it I showed you that, you know, you can fix like a mess if you make a mistake. And now with the um, finished look, I think it looks really nice. I really do love this. This is a hidden drugstore gem and, you know, it is so affordable and economical. My face feels matte. It doesn't feel tacky or oily or dry. It just feels perfect. And you saw this like instantly cover the redness. So I really do love this and recommend it. So. If you enjoy makeup looks and you would like to see more from me, please give this video a thumbs up and just shoot me a comment and let me know. I enjoy doing makeup videos, but they are actually some of my least watched videos, so that's why I don't bother doing them. But I would really enjoy doing them more often if people would watch them. So let me know in the comment section. And in the meantime, I'll link my makeup playlist here and you can go catch up on any missed episodes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.